Hey everyone, uh, this is a talk about our journey from configuration management to security of IT systems. So, this is a feedback of what we did at Radar. Uh, Radar is a config management software. And um, we will present how we kind of switched from a pure automation and configuration management software to improving security uh, posture of systems. It will start with a brief history of Rudder, what it was, uh, the different turning points in our history, and the challenge we faced. And we'll conclude with what are the next step for us, the logical evolution after that. This journey does no, do, doesn't contain any monster, except maybe a strong French accent. As you heard, I'm French. And Oh, there should be an introduction slide that I lost. So, I'm Nicolas Charles, I'm a co-founder of Rudder. Uh, I'm French, as you heard. I'm a technical guy, and uh, I've been there since the inception of Rudder. So, Rudder is an open source configuration software that we've started in 2011, so it's quite old now. And the main focus was make it make configuration management easy. I don't know if you remember the old time of configuration management, uh, 2011, uh, learning a language that was constantly moving or changing, passing the output to see what was, uh, what was happening. Um, it was fairly complex, to be honest. Teams with, with more than one people knowing how to use config management were very uncommon and even team with config management were in common. So our principal goal was to make it more easy, to have more people uh, having benefits from configuration management. We wanted also to make visible what the agents or what the config management software was doing, to see what was happening and so to have a measure of the difference between the actual state and the desired state of the systems. And with a tight feed feedback loop. So we do a change and we have a quick-ish answer to see what was changed and what happened. And so at this time, we, our motto was configuration management for the masses. Our goal is really, we are really to have most people been using config management in yeah. any different way. You have to uh, speak a little bit more into the mic, I think. Okay, is it better like that? I don't know. Right, right really close to the mic. Is it better like that? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. So the, our goal was really to make configuration management easy so that everybody in, uh, in, com in team, in IT team, could benefit from that. Like people knowing how to manage a service would be able to create the configuration with Rudder and people not knowing how to manage the service or not knowing how to use config management would still be able to see what's happening, to have feedback, to have a, an overview of everything and even have junior people, uh, interns or, or people uh, very new to IT, be able to extract and get knowledge from the system. We have a full inventory, we, had a f we still have a full inventory of the system. We have a way of grouping them, so people not knowing how to configure would still be able to, um, wh we're still and are still able to define how to group together the system to make sense for the infrastructure. So you have people from asset management you, uh, who would benefit from that. People from security as well. You can extract information from the, from the software for security. And so Rudder was, was chosen by the users for, its, for compliance. So having the feedback, knowing what's happening. And it's ease of use. We had people really looking at the software and say, I want that. I don't want to type code. I don't want to have people in my team needing to write code. 
and it was used for, to configure system, obviously, it's configuration management. Some people also used it for the inventory because they didn't have any asset management. They did their own asset management with Rudder to audit the systems, so to make it easy to have uh, their own audit uh, because they, are, they had auditors that were very unhappy with the state of their system for hardening and to make visible what was hidden. Some, some of our users were used to have a configuration management system and they were sure that it was working correctly and that everything was correctly configured, but they were simply not looking correctly at their loads and they discovered afterwards that not, uh, a lot of things were not correctly configured or not compliant to what they wanted. And our user asked for many features. The most asked feature from uh, our community was first the audit mode. So be able to run the, the system without doing any change, no remediation. They wanted built-in hardening, like CIS. So the audit mode, we did it. The built-in hardening, it's a bit harder. OpenSCAP integration, so automatically run OpenSCAP, uh, check the OpenSCAP profile on the system. CVU detection to, de to view the vulnerability and patch management. I'm pretty sure you all see a pattern in that. It's more security than uh, automation. And meanwhile, something happened in the configuration management landscape. As a reminder, Rudder started in 2011 when config management was still not a solved problem and Ansible happened. And by basically every configuration management became Ansible or it's like the definition of config management and automation. It also meant that we had difficult market fit for Rudder. We cannot present Rudder as infrastructure as code because it's very uncommon to write code using Rudder. Everything is made through the API or through the web interface. You can write code, but you really need to be willing to do that. But we are not a no-code solution either. It's not plug and play. You have to configure something in it. You have to include your rules. So we are in, in between. <coughs> Our users didn't really benefit from what uh, Rudder offered most. We offered PDF export of compliance, but really, sysadmin do need PDF export? No, not really. And clicking to configure system, who does that Ex except the Windows user? Not, not much like that, really. So it was a time of difficulty for us, but the context changed. We are a lot of interest in security in the world, uh, some international norms like CIS, some benchmarks. Uh, in France, we had a lot of pedagogy, pedagogy from uh, the ANSI. Uh, I don't really know how to translate that, but that's a national agency for security of inf uh, information system, which goes over companies and tells them, you should work like that, you should improve your security. They publish white paper uh, yearly and explain how things should be configured. And um, some companies are m forced to follow this standard. And there are the malwares and all the ransomwares and everything. And it's no longer a question of will we be attacked, but when will we be attacked? So security has become a key point for most companies and uh, most, uh, and not only companies, association also, or private users. So it was time for a change at Rudder. And we, we were asking ourselves, what's the purpose of Rudder? What, what's the future of that? It's at this time that a new CEO stepped in in Rudder with a cybersecurity mindset. He came from the cybersecurity world. He was doing PRA and uh, stuff like that uh, in security company before. And Rudder 
as a good fit for security. It shows what's happening. It exposes information. We have an agent that runs every five minutes that checks the status of the systems every five minutes. So it's in continuous. It can, it's not instantaneous, but it's fairly fast. It measures the compliance built-in of system. And so the change for Rudder becomes that our goal is to provide a way for our users to prove their compliance and to improve their security posture. So that's, that's not exactly not our motto, but that's our main goal. So we need to change a product to move from pure config management to something around offering benefits for security. How can we do that? And especially, how can we do that without messing with the existing users, not breaking everything, not breaking the product of what has some value in the product, and not making it uh, look like we were buying something else and wrapping it around Rudder to, to put a new feature in the software. So what we chose as an approach was to do some small changes in the product. Uh, each version, we in added new features, and we made them discoverable. Disco discoverable. I'm sorry, I'm French. Uh, so we so we use a product like product led growth. So here we here in the menu we introduced patch management and security management, so that user can see, discover that we have new features and they don't break the usual user experience. If users don't want to look at them, they can simply skip them and use Rudder as they did before. And so we change also the way we speak of the product. And now what we want of Rudder is that system administrators, cloud users, Security teams in charge of hardening will excel at their work using Rudder. Continuous hardening, control, audit of the security posture, application of security standard recommendation, patch management application will be fulfilled with Rudder. A lot of words. And there. There are many ways in which infrastructure automation tooling can be used to support an organization's IT objective. Do anybody here recognize this text? No. Okay. We are not the only one doing this change. It's come from Puppet. And it's really, really similar to the way we present it. We are not the only one doing this change to security. Most tools are including security features and uh, based on continuous automation, continuous compliance, patch management. That's that's an expected move now that configuration management exists and is very common. So how did our users react to our change? They were fairly happy, to be, uh, to be honest. They were not ecstatic, but they were really happy that we moved to the security and that we make uh, Rudder usable by more people in their team. And also, it lets them either reduce the number of software in their stack, so they, they can drop some software if they were using, doing basic patch management of some, or vulnerability management, or it allows them to integrate with other tools of their stack more uh, better, to export data in their SOC, for instance. Some new users were confused by this uh, way of presenting stuff because we are saying we do security, but we are not a pure security software. We are config management and security. So some users tell us, but you're doing patch management. Why can't, I, can't you fetch from the repository of every software in the world that uh, this software is outdated? Because we are doing config management and not really pure patch management. So some expectations were not always met by uh, the new, for the new users. And we, were, we sometimes speak to users for security who don't understand what is config management, which is surprising, but some security teams are very far away from the world of config management. And when we 
tell them you can configure things, they say, oh no, 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 you won't configure things. So now, what's the next step? Where do we go from there? We plan to make rather a single source of compliance for those who would like, and to incorporate compliance from other resources. First, we'll uh, include Ansible as a source of compliance, so run the playbook and get the output to be able to measure the compliance of the system. We plan to integrate with other tools, uh, main, probably SysDick and OpenSCAP, but it could be other tools. And we especially want to increase the value of configuration management by using data. We have a lot of information in Rudder about everything that's managed. We want to put this data in perspective and give meaning to it. So gather data from external sources, aggregate them, and change the configuration first approach we have to have something more global for compliance. Like be able to, to ask questions and the answer of which nodes are impacted by this specific vulnerability. Which are the nodes in this data center that's not behaving perfectly well? I have compliance issues for this node. What are the other nodes like that we, who have also compliance issues similar? How can we do that? We have the full inventory of nodes. We have a way of grouping nodes, thanks to the groups. We have the list of all the policy applied on systems. We have the compliance of the systems that are managed. And we can gather information from external data, from CMDB, from REST APIs, etc. So we need to aggregate all this information and have a structured API to query in a similar way every aspect of data that are stored in Rudder. So the nodes, nodes are systems that are managed by Rudder, the groups, the parameters applied on the system, the techniques, techniques are a bit like the playbook in the Ansible world, directive rules, the compliance, the available updates, the patch management campaign that has been run to upgrade the systems, all the applicable CVs, external resources, and probably others that we don't know yet. We want it to be pluggable and extensible because there are many things that we don't know yet. And fast enough, so that we don't have to wait two hours to get a result like in some uh, OLAP group, a uh, cube. Easy to maintain for the users to make sense of, uh, out of it. And GraphQL seems to be the proper solution for that. So GraphQL is an open source uh, query language that has been uh, released, uh, open sourced in 2018, that lets you aggregate data from different backend and make graph queries out of that. And so we will include in Rudder a compliance browser that will query every backend available and external backends mm -hmm. to extract information and give sense of the data, uh, to the data. Some side topics. Um, we are moving to security, so we need to secure our software also. So there are two very great talks about how to, uh, to secure our software on the supply chain. Uh, one was one hour ago, securing the software supply chain for infra management tool. And one was yesterday, how do we make Rudder secure? So we need, um, since Rudder has a sig significant impact on the infrastructure, it runs as root, it manages system, it contains all the information on every system managed by it and what you do. It talks on the data, so it exposes information. It's a complex software. We have many, many different languages included. We have Scala, we have F Sharp for Windows, we have Perl, Python, etc., and several levels of abstraction. So we need to have security as a first class citizen in the product roadmap. So we can't leave any uh, CVE or vulnerability in our software or in any of our libraries. So we've been working a lot on the front-end side 
to ensure that no one could inject things within Rudder, either from a corrupted node or from the web interface itself, or from the API. So proper section expiration, XSS hardening, CSRF, etc., etc. We included a package manager for every dependencies in uh, uh, JavaScript and CSS to make sure that they were free of any vulnerabilities. We secured our bu building pipeline, so with hardening option for co at compilation times, we have a server dedicated to signature for the, so uh, the source code. Uh, we have vulnerability detection in the code and in the libraries, and it's mostly automated. And on the backend side, uh, we have sandboxes policies from for uh, all our services. And we plan to remove uh, the services running as root that listen to the service so that they will run with lower privileged users. Built in two factor authenti authentication, TLS 1.3. We do regular training for the development team on how to ensure we keep the security of our system. And we do systematic security assessment of every change. So every time we add a new feature, every time there is a pull request that change something significant, we do a security assessment of this change. And we have also users or customers really doing pen test of Rudder. So they regularly check the security of the software and they share the results from us. So the evolution from uh, configuration management to security, actually it's quite natural change. It's a logical evolution of Rudder and it's a logical evolution for every other config management system. Continuous compliance, configuration are building block to add value to the team. Do you have any questions? Yes? Can you say that again? Uh, for your notes, uh, for me and uh, the other tools, uh, do you also uh, support containers? Do I like support? Like or like uh, Poppin? Containers, you said? Yeah. Ah, so the question is, do we support containers for the nodes managed? Um, <coughs> we have a system with an agent running. On the, so every system are managed using an agent. It doesn't make more sense to put an agent in a container. Uh, Uh, so we could put the policies within the container, but it's really not the Docker way to do that. Okay. It's probably better to, to kill the container and restart it with newer version of the configuration. Or did I not understand the question? No, well, if you talk about security posture of software, then a lot of software that runs in containers is also just as important as... Okay. So, okay, so for the security of software running into containers, it's probably better to use things that will um, look from the outside at the container to check the security or to check at build time uh, the content of the, se of the container so that you know what's inside and uh, detect from what you know from the build time or the creation time of the container what's inside and destroy it when necessary. No, it's not not yet something rather will solve. Probably in the future, but not for the moment. Any other questions? Thank you, everyone.